It's always a joy to fellowship with God's people. And I want to thank you for coming tonight. You have come to the place where the Lord is. I'm sure you have been praying and seeking the face of the Lord. And it is my prayer that whatever is said tonight will not return void, but it will accomplish that which the Lord desires. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Acts chapter 12. I like your theme, serving the Lord with singleness of heart. I would like to take the liberty to bring greetings from the rest of your brothers and sisters in the Caribbean. And uh, I had the privilege two weeks ago to fellowship with your brothers and sisters in the country of Indonesia and Singapore. And what a joy it was to share with God's people. I told my wife while I was there, I said, we were 13 hours ahead. And while you were having Wednesday, it's now 8, 9.30, uh, 8.35 here, it would be 10.35 in the morning on Thursday. So we were 13 hours ahead. And I, every time we spoke, I said, I am in the day before you and I'm clearing the day for you. I'm securing the day, I'm clearing all the minds and anything so that when you come into this day, everything will be ready for you. And I told my brothers and sisters in Indonesia, I said, you have a privilege, you have the privilege to pray for the rest of your brothers because you are 12 or 13 hours ahead and you need to cover the day before we get there. The, the church worldwide has come on a serious attack, as you know. We are hearing of persecutions of believers everywhere. It seems like the enemy has gotten to the point where he is upset because of the progress that is taking place in several countries of the world. In the country of China, the church is growing by leaps and bounds. And by the church, I mean not just our organization, but the church is growing even though there is oppression. One recent article, a pastor and his wife were sentenced to 12 and 14 years, respectively, because they tried to stop the authority from taking the cross out of the church. They were sentenced. And uh, if you follow the news, you will know that persecution is prevalent in many of the Muslim countries against Christians. We were told that in Indonesia, there is the law against conversion. You do not convert a Muslim to Christianity because it's against the law and is punishable by death. So you see, it is not an easy thing for your brothers and sisters in many countries to be spreading the gospel. They have to find ways and means to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But nonetheless, it's been shared. And people are being saved. And the church is moving forward because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. We have been promised and we know that we are unstoppable. Amen. We are unstoppable Amen. because Jehovah leads the way. Our God is in charge. Amen. And we are not reaching our hands and wondering what's going to happen tomorrow because we know who is in charge. Amen. You just need to faithfully serve Him with singleness of heart and life. Amen. Keep looking up to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the, oh, he is the, is the, the beginning and 
the ending. He is the first and the last. Hallelujah. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And our God reigns supreme. And we just need to trust Him wholeheartedly. Because as it was in this text that we will read, God is in charge. He rules in the affairs of men. And it doesn't matter who you are, the God we serve rules in your affairs. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the text. Now I'd like for you to follow me. I read from the King James Version. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Notice in verse 3 what's in the bracket. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4 and 5. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quartarians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. I don't know what version you have, but read verse 5 with me. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. As I read this text, you could have so many topics. Praying church is a powerful church, the unstoppable church, and you can put theme, you can find a theme for it. But I want to share with you that the church as was organized by our Lord was carrying out his mandate. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. He gave an express command. We call it the commission, the great commission. But notice that a commission is not just you and I on the mission because the Lord is accompanying us on the mission. So that's why it's called a commission. I will not send you alone, but I will be with you. So in our mission to make disciples of all nations, the Lord is with us on the expedition to see that men and women comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, the church was making progress, but the enemy was upset. And I think that you need to begin to draw inference from that, that just as the enemy was upset in the time past, he's still upset today. Because we're living in a time when they don't even want to hear the name Jesus. People are satisfied when you say God, because it could be anything you're talking about, or anyone, any God. But they don't like Jesus. And I wish the church tonight would say Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is upset, but every knee must bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. God, the Father. Herod, the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. But let me tell you a little bit of story about this John. You remember he has a brother uh, James has a brother named John. He killed James with a sword. But there are three persons in Jesus' inner circle. Peter, James, and John. It was James and John whose mother 
went to Jesus and said, Master, I wish you would let one of my sons sit on your right hand and on your left hand. Jesus said to her, you don't know what you're asking. And he asked them a question. Are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I will be baptized with? And they said, yes, Lord. He said to them, are you able to drink of the cup that I will drink of? He said, yes, Lord, we are able. And the Lord said something. He said, you shall indeed drink of the cup. And you shall indeed be baptized with the baptism. But as to sit on my right hand and on my left hand, it's not mine to give. But my Father, which is in heaven. My brothers and sisters, the cup that Jesus drank was a cup of suffering. Because he went to the cross for you and I. When, when, when the discouraging element came and he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He surrendered himself to the will of the Father and he drank that cup, that cup of redemption that brought your pardon and mine. He paid for our sin by his death at the cross of Calvary. He suffered, bled, and died, but thank God, death could not keep him. He rose triumphantly from the grave. Hallelujah. So Herod gave James his desire to drink of the cup by taking off his head. James had an early exit, the first of the apostles that was martyred. But if you know this text, James, the brother of John, had the earliest exit by death. But know that John was the last surviving apostle. When all the other apostles died, John was still alive on the Isle of Patmos, right to get in the revelation. I don't know how God determined how long you make you should go, but your hands are your time is in God's hand. Look at your neighbor and tell them your time is in God's hand. And he will determine that day, that hour, that moment when you must exit out of here. Because we're not here forever. And we must one day appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So we're not here forever. So we don't need to get comfortable. We need to do our task and exit. James did his task and went on. But Herod was happy. Have you ever seen a time when people kill somebody else and is happy about it? My Lord. So he went and he arrested Simon Peter. Notice the text in verse because he saw that killing James, and this is a paraphrase now, killing James pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take Peter also. But notice in bracket, then were the days of unleavened bread. Why would the writer want you to remember that it was the days of unleavened bread? Because you see, earlier on in Peter's ministry, he denied Jesus at Easter time. It was one Easter, he denied Jesus. So this, the writer wants you to know that the enemy wants to strike at the time of your weakness. If he knows that at Christmas time, or carnival time, you have a weakness and you fail one year, he's gonna come back at that time yes. was the case with Simon Peter. But little did he know that Simon Peter was a different Simon Amen. Peter. Amen. Because this man was, was, was anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he was ready for the devil when he came the second time. So then were the days of unleavened bread. But Simon was not the same coward 
when he denied Jesus three times, this man was prayed up, fired up, and ready for the battle. Oh, hallelujah. He was no longer a coward. When you come to Jesus, you cannot be a coward. Because greater is he that is in you. Oh, hallelujah. Than he that is in the world. The power of God resides in this temple of clay. For you have within you that in this earth and vessel, that treasure. From the Lord. That gives you that overwhelming power to proceed in his strength and in his authority. So Simon Peter was taken at Easter, but this Easter, he was different. He was changed. He was matured in his faith. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so, when he had apprehended him, or arrested him, he put him in prison. Now, a Bible preacher is not, an in, is, is not somebody who is dangerous. In the sense that the society don't have to worry because he preaches the word. But when you have a preacher who was, they used 16 well-trained soldiers to guard him. Four, the Bible said four quartarians of soldiers. 16 soldiers to guard one man. That's how much Herod value this arrest. No getting away! Look at your neighbor and say, you believe that? <laughs> you know what that reminds me? I told you about Jesus dying. You remember when Jesus was buried? Yes. Oh, Pilate said, We heard that he was going to come out, and we were afraid his disciples would steal him away. Seal the tomb! Yes. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how you seal it or how you secure it. When Jesus, the Bible said, was preaching to the spirits in prison. Simon Peter was in prison. But notice that when James was arrested, it seems like the church was caught napping. The church wasn't praying at all. But when they arrested Peter, it activated the prayer machine of the church. The prayer machinery of the church became operative. And notice what verse 5 says. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But. <laughs> I heard that but is a conjunction that joins two joins the sentence together. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Sixteen soldiers guarding this one innocent preacher. But! Look at your neighbor and say, but. It always changed the, 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 the face of things. Perception is different from reality. Perception is he can't get away from 16 well-trained soldiers. So they thought. But prayer was made. Say that with me. But prayer. They weren't singing all night. They were praying. Church, when you're in business and you decide to pray, you need to pray. It is unfortunate that prayer meetings are not well attended in most churches. Yes, amen. It is unfortunate that the most powerful services 
should be the prayer meetings and the Bible studies. But these are not well attended because people don't understand the importance of prayer. But prayer is so important that Jesus made reference in St. Luke 18 and verse 1 that men are always to pray and not to faint. We can't faint if we pray. The church needs to be praying. One of the problems we're having is that we are going through the motion, but prayer is lacking. But I call us tonight to say we're going to do better. I'm talking to you, but I am saying that even I, though I pray, we need to still do better. Gone are the days for the all-night prayer meetings. Thank God. But I think the church here was so activated that the Bible said, but prayer was made. How? Without ceasing, without stopping. Whether it was a chain prayer or all night prayer, but the church became activated that, Herod, you are not going to have your way. We don't know how God is going to deliver you. Know. But when you pray to God, leave it to God. And watch what God will do. For what is impossible with man is possible with God. Was made without ceasing of the church. The church must pray. And prayer must have a focus. Singleness of heart. You can't be praying and your mouth saying one thing and your mind is back home and that lovely meal you are going to eat when you get back home. That's right. There need to be that singleness of heart, that focus, that intention to ask God. The church were not praying God bless Simon Peter. They were praying God deliver Simon Peter. That's right. Prayer must be intentional. Yes. Must be focused. Yes. Must be clear. Yes. Prayer was made without ceasing unto God. Who is God? The creator of the ends of the world. The one who spoke this earth into being. Yes. Prayer was made unto God. Yes. Not to bless the church, but for Peter's deliverance. Yes. Yes. Prayer. That's right. Could it be that your prayer are not being answered because you are just saying, God bless me? Yeah. You perhaps need to say, God, this is where what I need. The report of the doctor says, I have this, that, Lord, heal this disease. Amen. Heal this cancer. Yes. Heal this sugar diabetes. Yes. Heal this high blood pressure. There need to be that focus That's right. on the particular issue. Yeah. Because God hears and answers prayer. Yeah. Yeah. It must be focused. Yeah. And I guess some of you here tonight, there are things that you have been praying for and it hasn't come through. Do we have anybody here like that? Yes. Do we have anybody in the house like that? Yeah. There are some things you have been praying for and you haven't seen the answer yet. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, keep praying. Keep on praying. And the Bible said, perhaps a few hours before Herod would have brought him forth to the people to execute him. Follow me carefully. Look at verse 6 in the text. When Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. So his left hand was, strained, was chained to the soldier standing beside him. 
and his right hand was chained to the other soldier standing there yeah. beside him. And Simon Peter was doing something that it is not normal to do. I know most of the British territories have given up on capital punishment, Britain themselves, because they say it's inhumane. But it is said that in places where their people are down to be killed, two weeks to the day they can't sleep. They can't sleep because of the tension, the stress. But my brothers and sisters, look at the text. What was Simon Peter doing? In other words, Herod, take your best shot. But I'm not afraid to catch my now. In other words, if I have to die, I'm going to face it valiantly. But I'm not going to lose sleep over your threat. He was resting, and I think that his sleep was so sweet and so deep that when the angel, notice the next verse, that when the angel came into the prison, he had to punch Peter in the side. Oh, you don't, hear, you don't see it there? It says that the only angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote. What is Lord? Strike him! Slap him hard! Could it be that somebody has threatened your life or threatened your family? A circumstances or situation has come so hard that you're losing sleep over it? God, stop losing sleep because your God is real. Somebody needs to know that we serve a God. Lester, Lester Summerall. He went into the Amazon jungle to preach. You know, all kinds of witchcraft, all kinds of things, and he was sleeping on his bed. And all of a sudden, the room, his, his bed started moving across the room. And he woke up a little, and he said, Oh, it's you. And he went back to sleep. <laughs> And then when the spirit was going through, he said, hey, come back. Put it back where you saw it. Put it back my bed where you saw it. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, you have authority in Jesus. Somebody need to tell somebody, you have authority in the name of Jesus. Every child of God needs to know who you are and whose you are. The power of the Holy Spirit. Body of clay, that is your authority over every plan of the adversary. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I say to the enemy, put it back where you see it. And if, if you don't know when the enemy comes in, and trying to disturb you, you need to say in the name of Jesus, go back from where you are. Somebody needs to tell that enemy. Yes. 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 Return to sender. Yes. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 Because no weapon that is 
tongue against you shall prosper. And every tongue, oh, praise God. Every tongue, somebody need to confess. Every tongue, oh, good God, rise against you. Which you shall condemn. Because this is the heritage. This is what God has given to you. Your belonging, your heritage. And your righteousness is of the Lord. Yeah. Don't belong to nobody else. So nobody else can direct your life but the Holy Spirit. So return to sin that in the name of Jesus Christ. And no weapon. Here was Simon Peter chained between two soldiers. Two of them. But that left 14 of them standing firm. Standing at attention, yeah. protective. Oh the door is shut, yeah. chained to the soldiers. Angels, the angel came in and said to Simon Peter, get up. Now, many of you, even if you have an overcoat, you take it off because you won't have a good night's sleep, right? Yeah. Simon Peter took off his coat. His overcoat and put it aside because the man was really going to get a nap. <laughs> Praise God. And when the angel came in, verse 7 says, Get up! Put on your coat about you, put on your sandal. Follow me. Yeah. Now, when Simon Peter got up, the chains fell off. Now, the miracle is that when chains fall to the concrete pavement, what it does? The question I want to ask you, why is it that the soldiers didn't hear? Because it was not Simon Peter orchestrating a breakout. It was God orchestrating a break in. silent threat from some people but God needs to work into the, the job the workplace and tell you listen I know who you are and I can take care of you I used to work in a corporate office once and I know what it was when it come to assessment time and they said well you know this era is not good this era is not good how do you know look at my work I complete my work every time but because sometimes giving you a good review, you are up for increased salary. Some people don't like that. But since God is for you, who can be against you? Tell me, ask your neighbor, since God is for you, who can be against you? Soldiers who were so alert to even hear a whisper didn't hear the sound. And I submit to you that when God brings about the miraculous deliverance, he who makes the chain can silence the chain. Yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know the element in the chain because chain comes from iron ore that is taken from the earth. Who created the earth? And he knows the element. So when it fell, no sound because he cushioned it to the extent that these well-trained soldiers didn't hear a sound. My brothers and sisters, you know sometimes you're going through some situation and you wonder, how am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? 
but God already know. Your deliverance is already secure. Because before you pray, he said, I will answer. And while you are yet praying, I will hear you. How God does that to me is miraculous. But he is hearing your prayer. And Simon Peter, Simon Peter, when they went to the first gate and it opens by itself. The next time you go to the supermarket, the next time you go to the supermarket, when you walk through the door and it opens by itself, go back outside. And then you look at it and say, all oh, the technology. <laughs> Because 2,000 years ago, my God, I am a godly son. All technology, 2,000 years ago, it opens on its own accord. It didn't have any sensor, it didn't have anything on the floor. It opens by itself. Oh my God. And Bishop, I sense God is opening some doors right now. Simon Peter, 
he knew where Mary's house, Mary, the mother of John Mark. John Mark is the one who wrote the book of Mark. So he went to Mary's house. By the way, there are seven Marys in the Bible. Or well, seven of them, don't mix them up. This is John Mark's mother's house. Okay. And he knocked on the door. And a little girl, and he says, hello! And the little girl heard his voice. And said, she didn't open the door, she ran back yeah. inside and said, Simon Peter is at the door. And here was the church inside. God deliver Simon Peter. Help me here, church. God deliver Simon Peter. Lord, we want you to go into Herod's prison and deliver Simon Peter. Lord, you see that sickness. Come on, help me. Deliver. God, that situation. Deliver. When she said to them, Simon Peter is at the door, I said, you are mad. <laughs> Has God ever surprised anybody in this house? Yes. Talk to me. Has God ever surprised anybody in this house? He answered so fast and just said, Lord, you're good in the Lord. The lady who was hungry and said, Lord, I need you to provide for me. And before she was finished, she heard a knock on the door. And somebody left a bag of grocery and disappeared. And she said, God, I'm going to try That's her response in, Lord, I'm just going to try In other words, you answer so quick. I remember several years ago, I was, I, I was praying. I said, Lord, I have a car, but no money to buy gas. And I'm praying, and I'm praying, Lord, not very low. And I heard a knocking on the door, and it was my landlord. She said, Mr. Martin, the Lord asked me to give you this money. Amen. And she was gone. I didn't ask her anything. I took the money. I was able to buy the gas. I was able to drive to work. I said, God can answer quick. that God has answered some of your prayer already. Yeah. When you're not, you're feeling to open the door. Yeah. The prayer, the answer yeah. Yeah. is at the door. Yeah. So while the church was knocking on the gates of heaven, yeah. knocking on the gates of heaven, Simon Peter was knocking at the door of the church. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! They were saying, Lord, deliver Peter. But it happened so quick were still knocking on the door of heaven and God allowed Peter to be knocking on the door to the house. Yeah, I sense that God has answered some prayers. You don't have the faith to believe. That's what the problem is why you are struggling so much because your God knows what you need. Yes. And I submit to all of us here tonight that when you have, when you're serving God with singleness of heart, and if He calls for prayer, if you have to turn on the pot, turn off the stove, you're going to pray. But are we desperate? I heard the worship team song, Lord, I'm desperate for you. The question is, how desperate are you? How desperate are you? Desperate to the point that you will look at the food and say, not now. Because many of us are coming from, I think my wife and I were coming from that old school where from 40 years ago in the church where when they never had food, they put on the pot. And when the water boiled down, they pulled it back and kept praying until her father would say, but that looked like deacon from the church coming up the road there. 
and deacon come in with a couple bags of food and meat and other stuff. They kept on praying. Yes. Church, if we are going to see God move, we must keep on praying. Yes. Oh, tell your neighbor, keep on praying. Amen. Keep on praying. Amen. They used to call it storming the mercy seat. Yes. I'm not sure if it's referred to that way anymore. But the church need to storm the mercy seat. Need to say, God, I'm here. I'm here and I'm not going to move until I get an answer. Oh, God. This church was not giving up because they were saying, Herod, you can't kill the man of God. It doesn't matter how the enemy tries. You can't kill a worshiper. You can't kill a worshiper. A worshiper will still worship. Even when you pass through the valley of Baca, I will still praise God.
husband, vexed wife for three, four days. Let it go. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Why don't you take the blame and say, I'm sorry I quarreled with you. I am so sorry. Forgive me. Let's go on. Because my brothers and sisters, the Lord said when you stand praying, believe that whatever you pray for, that's St. Mark chapter 11. And then verse 23 and 24 promise you that you can say to the mountain, be thou removed. But when you stand praying, fuck it. So you see me getting an answer. I have nothing against nobody. I don't say they, have, they don't have anything against me. No. But if I know that, then I have to take care of it. Yes. But I'm going on. Yes. Tell your neighbor one more time, let it go. Let it go. You think that if the church did not know their God, they would have gotten an answer? One man, one man disrupt the nation of Israel. One man, his name is Achan. One man. Because he took up the Babylonian's garment. Put it in his tent. And you read the history of the conquest of Israel. In all those between five to 11 years. When Israel soldiers fought for the promised land. Only, only 36 soldiers who died, died when Achan sinned. After that, not one more soldier in the next five years died. Isn't that amazing? The God we serve is able to provide. And so some people are thinking, Bishop, that God should just drop the prayer on their love, or what they're praying for, just drop it on their love. But not going to come so easy to have to pray. Yes. For when God said to Israel, go to the promised land, they weren't just going to walk in and say, this is my lot. They have to fight for it. Yes. Some people need, need to know that this struggle that we're in, you're going to have to fight to get your yes. answer. Yes. Yes. Be persistent. Be single-minded yes. like that woman yes. who would not give up. But she said, I must get answer. Yes. Tell your neighbor, I must get answer. By that I mean, come on, follow me. By that I mean, I'm going to lay aside the weight and the sins which doth so easily beset me. Stand up with me, and I'm going to run this race with patience. If I pray one time, and the answer don't come, I'm still going to pray. I'm going to pray until I pray. But I know my God. He will deliver. He will set free. Because I'm going to war in the spirit.
I want for you, as the Holy Spirit lead you, pray for that person or persons. If you hold two hands, ask them their name. I want you to call their name. Ask two persons. If you know their names already, that's fine. Is there one in the house you are not a Christian? 
Come right here, right now. And I pray for you. Right here, right now. Everybody in this house knows Jesus as Savior. Father, I ask you to touch all your people. Give them the shoes of evangelism that somebody might bring someone to your house who don't know you so that they can be exposed to the virtue and the blessings of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, walk through this house tonight. Anyone who don't know you as Lord, I pray for their soul salvation and their deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I pray for an empowerment for every believer. Those who are weak in the faith, I pray for strength. I pray for an undergirding of the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, God and I declare that they will stand fast and firm in you. Yes. God, I ask you, God, to help them. Help your people. We need you. We need your anointing. And we need your grace. Pray for the ministry in Anguilla. Your Holy Spirit, oh God, will save God the ministry. And I pray, dear Father, that during this conference, Lord God, the giftings that you have placed in the lives of people will come to the surface. That they will see and know why they are Christians and why you have called them. So God, as, they, as, as your people, we have been implored to singleness. Lord God of thought and heart, I ask you to cause your people to turn heavenward. Yes, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Oh, for the joy that was set before him. Endure the cross, despising the shame, endure the cross, and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God in heaven. Thank you. Thank you. I pray for the spirit of prayer to rest afresh. Fresh fire upon your people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Fresh oil. In the name of Jesus. Fresh wind. In the name of Jesus. And I pray God for a for a new thing of the Holy Spirit. When your people begin to move on the impulse of your love and your power. So that the nation may know that there is a God in Anguilla who is in charge. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Bless you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord.